Councilmember Gonzalez. Thank you, <clears throat> Mayor. Uh, Mayor, I just want to speak in support of this item. I want to thank uh, the community leaders, and particularly Wendy Parker, that led the effort to try to uh, allow her community, her neighborhood, to be become a historic district, having gone through uh, through a lengthy process and engaging with uh, her neighbors uh, in, in gaining support for this. Uh, it has gone through HIHC, it's gone through our planning director. There have been revisions uh, throughout the process. Um, as they modified it and achieved the 67%, uh, of those, only nine votes were no uh, out of 65 tracks, which was 14%. And, uh, and since it's, again, they've continued through the process that's been laid out by this uh, council. It has been a different process than earlier uh, uh, discussions on historic preservation. So they've, uh, they've uh, operated under the uh, process that's in place. And I think they should be allowed to uh, to protect their community and to try to bring stability to the area. Uh, we have very few tools in, in this city to be able to allow neighborhoods to do so. And in this case, I commend the neighborhood for stepping up and, and trying to coordinate that. I am sensitive to those, uh, whether it be one person or nine or whoever that, uh, that oppose it, because I understand and I've spoken to them, and I've taken time to speak to them personally uh, to, to uh, listen to their concerns. But uh, I, I feel that the, there is overwhelming support for the district out there uh, in the community. And so I am supporting this and would ask my, my colleagues to support this. And we want to thank you uh, and the administration for bringing this forward and supporting this item as well. Uh, thank you. Councilmember Christie. So, generally in favor of the, uh, the uh, Germantown Historic District, but I would like to, the option of the uh, Alvin Street to opt out of it so that if it needs to be sent back to administration to allow them to opt out, uh, I, I will do it that way. And then eventually vote for the, uh, the Germantown Historic District with allowing for the Alvin Street to opt out. Thank you, Mayor. The, the, the Article 7, uh, Section 33 of the Historic Preservation Ordinance, particularly 225, uh, it, it doesn't allow council to do anything except either vote uh, on uh, uh, an affirmation of the uh, designation or reject it. And rejecting it, uh, I think we're automatically sent it back to the planning department for further discussion and to make a determination whether it's going to come back to the council again. Uh, I, I do think property rights are very, very seriously, uh, should be very, very seriously considered as they uh, normally are. And I think it's, it's never too late to change your mind when there's an opportunity to change your mind when it comes to property rights. The current ordinance does not have any proviso in it for someone to change their mind. There's no proviso to make a retraction once you uh, uh, indicate that you want your uh, property designated as such. But I think as council members, as we sit here today, I think we have an, uh, an affirmative duty to reasonably believe at the time we vote that a 67% of the property owners out there, they want this to happen. Now, we have known for at least two weeks, because two weeks ago, there were citizens uh, that came down to our city council and presented in writing to us uh, some retractions. And when you take out those retractions, we don't have 67%. Those particular retractions are 110 Alma Street, 121 Alma Street, 209 Woodland Street, and 2904 Houston Avenue. They've given that to us in writing. We've had it for a couple of weeks from these citizens saying they want to do a retraction. And I think the planning department has done what it is expected to do. I think the planning department has, in fact, uh, followed the ordinance. But the ordinance has a deficit, in my view. The ordinance needs to be modified where there is a clear time period in the ordinance where citizens know that if you're going to retract, your retraction must be before X, Y, Z date. The ordinance does not speak to retractions now at all. 
that on issues such serious as property right issues, I think it'll be really clear that a citizen can change his or her mind, but there's a time period when they must do it. And this type of voting is unlike the regular voting in the ballot box. The regular voting at a ballot box, once we vote, it's a done deal because those are secretive ballots. No one can go in that can and say, this is my vote, this is my vote. We don't know. It's unknown, it's secretive. But on historic preservation designations, we can. They, you know, they, they're, they're signed uh, forms here, so we can go in it and retract the petitions from those people who say, you know, I changed my mind, I don't want mine in there. The point was made quite well yesterday by one of the speakers that the, the city gets a couple of shots at it, or the pro-historic designation group gets a, two shots at it. Because you can you draw the lines originally, you come forward. If you don't get your six, seven percent, you can go back again and recut the lines and try a second bite at it. Well, why not the people who are impacted most by the property rights issue, why they can't be allowed to change their mind too? Up to some reasonable point is what I'm saying. And as we sit here today, we're clearly on notice before we take the vote, and there's nothing requiring us to vote to move this forward. We're not required to do that. We could do as Councilman Christie has offered. Well, no today, let it go back, and let those people who want to retract, retract. And at the time we vote as a body, we reasonably and in good faith know that a majority of people, 6-7%, I should say, are in favor of it. So when I do the math today, as we sit here today, we have not 44 of the 65 homes. We have 40 of the 65 homes because four have submitted retractions to us that we've known about for two weeks. That's only 61.54% of the homeowners or property owners out there saying they want to do this. So, so I uh, will, in fact, support it if, in fact, there are a majority of homeowners saying they want to do it. They have an obligation to do that, and that's in compliance with the ordinance. But as we sit here today, we do not have, and we on full notice, and we have not voted, and we're not required to vote, and particularly with the knowledge that we don't have the 67% today, and the ordinance has no proviso in it to address retractions. The ordinance needs to be modified, letting people know when and how they can retract and what the deadline is to retract. So with 61.5% of the vote, I, I, I stand with Dr. Christian today and say it needs to uh, go back and allow for those who want to retract to retract. Thank you. Councilmember Burks. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I thought I was over with already. I, um, <coughs> in looking at the ordinance, Section 33-221 designation A says city council may designate building structures, objects, and sites as landmarks and protected landmarks, may designate areas as historic districts, may designate the sites as archaeological sites, and may define, amend, and delineate the boundaries of any landmark, protected landmark, historic district, or archaeological site as provided in this article. Then I look over at the next section, which is uh, uh, for the director. The section, uh, I believe it is uh, the same. Oh, yeah. Section F1, it talks about the director can go in and make the lines and redraw the lines at 67% to get the 67% needed. I am of this, of this uh, mindset here that when a voter votes, <laughs> that is it. Uh, the vote was sent out on this matter here. It was brought back. It did not have the 67% that was needed. The director followed the law. The director did not do anything wrong. The director followed the law to make sure that uh, in this situation here that they can get the 67%. She cut out <coughs> commercial businesses and apartment complexes who were not there originally. I understand what she did. She explained it to me. However, the voters voted. And there's one thing I do know is that we had the same incident that happened uh, several years ago, I think 2010, with the Glenbrook Valley subdivision. The same confusion, same problem that's come up. Um, I, I see a pattern here, and I would like to see us uh, do something with that. Uh, when someone wants to get out of something, I believe the Elm Street people ought to be able to retract and get out of that. Uh, I do believe, though, that I can vote for this if they are allowed to do that, and we can actually do something else to make this a historic district. Uh, but the ordinance I still, have, I still have a problem with, because the ordinance does not define the things as what we need. I think we need to, I would ask that we go back and be able to revisit that. Uh, so
of that ordinance so that we can make some, some changes uh, in it. One thing is when I look at the city council, there's a body of 16 or 17 of us. But when I look at the director of planning, there's only one person. And one person has that power to overrule a vote. I think that is not good. I think that uh, we're the representatives of the people, not the director of planning. And the way the ordinance reads in F1, it says the director can go back and redraw the lines and at the same time uh, do this for the designated area at 67%. That, to me, I have a problem with. Uh, maybe it was good back when it was written in 2010 or whatever it was written. This was put in there. But right now, I do believe that the people, the property owner, the property rights, the, those, they have property rights and they should be able to speak. They should be able to vote and their vote should count. I don't want to see us, this administration or this council, uh, be a part of it as it is that takes away the vote and the will of the people. I believe when it's explained and the process is thorough, that we should be able to follow the guidelines, follow the guidelines of that. We as council have an obligation to represent the people. Thank you, Mayor. Chancellor, if I may respond. The director draws the line, but it's always a vote of council that creates the district. There, there's nothing in this ordinance that in any way uh, removes the ability of council to, to create, ultimately, any historic district in the city of Houston. Uh, Councilor Davis. Thank you, ma'am. I have two questions. One, um, are there any uh, legal ramifications if we don't have this? I understand taking we do have the 60-some percent, but could the homeowners take this to court and <coughs> on this issue, it is not a vote of the citizens that creates this district, it is a vote of city council that creates this district. And we have the ability to create a district with no support in it, if we so choose. We would not do that, but it is a vote of city council that would that prevents. And when we did a resolution of the ordinances um, in District G, is there a way to, to go back to those 40 some towns and, and do them individually? Historic landmarks like it is individual landmarks, it is not necessary to do that. Uh, there are, the creating a historic district confers benefits to all properties, the contributing properties in that historic district. The individual landmark is used in areas like River Oaks, it is not a historic district, but individual property owners want to designate their properties. Thank you. Councilmember Brown. Thank you, Mayor have a situation where we have the knowledge of the property owners we're told to a certain um, I talked about I-45 expansion and the like and they were told that this is necessary for them, for the protection of their homes. Mm -hmm. Do they feel about that now it might be a different situation. We've already heard from a couple of people who found their, their support for this. And I think in the end as elected officials we have the responsibility to understand the situation that they're facing in that situation where they're told a certain story and following that story without further research, whether that's a responsibility or not, they, 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 they vote in a certain way and then they feel differently about it. And we should have to take that into consideration because this is not like an election in the ballot box. This is talking about um, having a petition where they say yes, they're in favor of it and then they, they decide that this is not to their benefit. And they went out and we do know full well that we do not have a 67% of the vote. We have a responsibility to say, okay, let's do this right and not try to force them, something upon them that they actually do not want now. Another matter, which some people may disagree with, is, is the naming of this historic district. We're talking about historic district. And historically speaking, this area has no nothing to do with Germantown. There's one reference where this area was uh, included in, a, in an area that included the Germantown area, and therefore the whole area was termed Germantown in one reference. And that was when that property was unincorporated. 
I mean, not unimportant, I'm sorry, uninhabited, undeveloped. And so this is, good. in no, no reference is truly speaking uh, a German town, and therefore, how can, in terms of the history, we should respect history, especially if you're establishing a historic district, you should take that into account. Um, main, main, main thing for me being the private property rights, and, and the citizens have spoken, and when they want to be able to have the opportunity to remove their support of an item, we need to listen to that and take that to heart. Thank you very much. Councilmember Rodriguez. Oh, thank you, Mayor. I was couldn't help but notice our city attorney he was making some interesting facial expressions. And I just wanted to <laughs> wanted to give him an opportunity to I don't know if something was said or a question was asked. I mean, we are on sure legal footing and abiding by the rules of council and, and the ordinance of current circuit. Yeah. Didn't mean to put you on the spot. I just thought you know you might want. To. Well, I've never had to publicly explain my facial expression. <laughs> We are out of the shop. Thank you. Yeah, it was the reference to with the one of my said, that, no, they, they, they couldn't sue us. Yeah, of course they could sue us. It's when we, when we win, and that's what he was making a face about. <laughs> Councilor Pennington. Thank you, Mayor. I mean, you, you've spoken to this briefly uh, before, but you said that the city can initiate the creation of a historic district without uh, the petition from, from the local residents. Councilmember, it, it, it was a general comment. The ordinance does not provide for council to initiate. I don't believe it provides for council to initiate historic districts. The issue was, it's not it's not the vote of the citizen that creates the district. It is the vote of council that creates the district. It also sp spoke to Councilmember Burks. It doesn't matter what the planning director decides. It is the vote of council that ultimately determines what the boundaries are of the district. But not the initiation of proceedings. That has to be done by the local. Correct. And the way the ordinance is drafted now, once a resident signs or a property owner signs, then uh, he or she is, is bound by that. There's no way to retract. Correct. I, I do I do think we need some finality to it, obviously, but uh, you know, for no future considerations, I think we ought to consider a change in the ordinance where it, it would say, uh, those who have approved or not approved by a certain date, um, uh, you know, rather than, than the way it is right now. This makes a very tough vote for people to sign and then not to sign. There's a, the ordinance requires a public, there's a public meeting, uh, the department provides information to the residents, and then there's a voting period uh, in which uh, votes have to be received. So it's I not see. just so like, it's like one, a one meeting. Day or a 60 day voting period. So uh, yeah, you're testing my memory. I think yeah. it's 30 days. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor for ten minutes off. Thank you, Mayor, and, and I do appreciate the comments by my colleagues, and I think uh, there's been some, some good points made. Uh, many of us have been through this this process in, in the past, but before. The threshold was 51%. That was increased by the change of ordinance to 67% to achieve a, a higher threshold. And a, a process was laid out in the ordinance. And the community uh, uh, that initiated this uh, did meet the guidelines at the time as they submitted this for it to be considered the historic district, uh, working to make sure that they did fall in the 67% as required. And then working with HHC that has already considered this and the planning director this is the plan that they submitted. Uh, there is no process currently in place to deal with the retractions. And even if this did go back and we reach the 67%, if, if, if it's not there or it is, or, uh, there's nothing that would, it could still come back and more people could drop back out again. And then we, it just continues going through this whole process. Either we have to support the process that has been initiated by the majority of the residents of the community and support their historic district, which is what I'm advocating here today. If not, then if we fundamentally disagree with historic preservation, I can understand that, and I would just urge you to vote no. But I think the vast majority of those in the 65 tracks have said that they support it, and contrary to what we may have heard, they did not say that it was because uh, the I-45 discussion or not. I mean, just 
like others could have been misinformed, they too, maybe those that oppose it may have also been misinformed. So uh, I think that they, they went through the process. Uh, if down the road we want to modify this ordinance to incorporate some of the, the timelines that have been uh, mentioned today, I, I think that would be reasonable for the administration to consider to bring more clarity. But at this point in time, we have to work with the ordinance that's in place. And, and again, I appreciate what the community has done on that. Councilmember Chris. 